AML stands for acute myeloid leukemia. And AML is a, a you know, rapidly fatal disease if, if not um, well treated. Uh, in fact, uh, I've met uh, many uh, patients who I met for the first time as they were flown in by helicopter, even to you know university hospital if if they were identified at, at uh, just an outlying hospital. So, uh, AML certainly can be a um, a real medical emergency uh, even in the short term. And so, for we th we oftentimes think about AML therapy, and we think about patients who are either eligible for the most intensive of chemotherapies, uh, younger patients, more fit patients. And we think of patients who are, the others of course, who are ineligible, not eligible for the most intensive of chemotherapies. And so for these patients who are not eligible for intensive chemotherapy, there's really been uh, limited improvements uh, in their care for the last 30 years or more. Uh, despite uh, a lot of uh, very hard uh, uh, efforts. And so what, um, what, what these patients um, have needed is a therapy that's effective enough to rapidly help them achieve remission and tolerable enough uh, that, that patients uh, who otherwise can't tolerate intensive chemotherapy can receive the benefit of a less intensive regimen. Uh, we'll be presenting some updated analyses regarding patients who have been treated with the combination of venetoclax plus azacitidine. So earlier this year in the New England Journal of Medicine, a paper was presented over uh, that presented the uh, the outcomes for the overall patient population enrolled in a study referred to as BIALE A, uh, B I A L E hyphen A. And the Viali A study tested azacitidine, which had been, as, as a single treatment, had been a standard treatment approach for patients who were ineligible for intensive chemotherapy. So we evaluated the standard treatment, azacitidine, versus azacitidine plus venetoclax. And what we saw and have reported is across the whole population of patients, so patients, regardless of which mutation uh, or group of mutations their AML cells had, we saw the improved uh, response rate, we saw improved uh, transfusion independence rates, uh, and very importantly, we saw improved survival uh, for the patients who received the venetoclax. So the, uh, the presentation that we're discussing right now this weekend uh, in, um, looks now at a specific group of patients. There's a, a mutation, uh, a group of mutations called isocitrate dehydrogenase uh, mutations or IDH mutations. And so a question that investigators were interested to know more about was understanding that venetoclax and azacitidine improved outcomes for the average patient enrolled in our study, Valley A, but how about those patients who have specifically IDH mutations? Uh, how do those patients uh, do? And so um, we looked both at the Valley A study, and we also looked at um, some looked at patients from other studies of venetoclax and azacitidine that happen to have the IDH mutation also in their leukemia cells. And so we aggregate those patients together and then we compare against the patients who receive azacitidine alone and have that very same mutation in their leukemia cells. And indeed, what we find is not only do patients who have IDH mutation respond to venetoclax combination, but indeed appear to be among some of the most sensitive, uh, their leukemia is among some of the most sensitive of the leukemias to the combination. So uh, this, this uh, weekend we'll be showing the updated results specific for just that group of patients uh, regarding how the patients have responded to the regimen.